All right, so we're out here. We're gonna take a look at some cars. Why? Because everybody wants to see cars, cars, cars. I love cars. This video is sponsored by Bosley, baby! America's number one hair restoration expert. The sooner you take action, the more options you'll have for keeping and restoring your hair. Bosley has both surgical and non-surgical solutions to help you keep the hair you have and grow thicker, fuller hair where you need it the most. Right now, Bosley's giving away a free information kit and $250 gift card towards a procedure. Take it from me. You don't want to wait. Just get the information and learn what you could be doing right now to keep and grow your hair. There's a reason millions of men and women have come to Bosley for answers to their hair loss and hair restoration questions. People trust Bosley. They are truly the leaders in hair restoration. They have the most experience restoring hair and experience matters. Learn how to get your hair back. Act now. Click the link and get your free Bosley Info Kit and $250 off gift card. It's that simple. Everything has to make sense according to your lifestyle and what you can afford. So let's take a look at my life and what I got. Everybody's got to have their own shit. First thing you got to do is have a budget. How much out of all everything I got am I willing to put towards having some nice cars? Well, I came up with a million bucks. Car number one, the high roller. When you got to go out in style, you got to take something that has some style, baby. This is the most luxurious sedan you can buy on the market. This is the real deal. All right, this ain't no copycat Mercedes Maybach. Maybach. Never buy new when you're buying a high-end luxury car. You will lose your shirt. Buy it when it's at least one to two years old with very little mileage on it. I bought it, it was less than two years old. Half a million bucks. The guy before me paid six and a quarter, but I traded my old one in and got a really good price for that. I'm gonna Let's pop you, go. and it's gonna be a Just big go pop. Ahead, do it. If you don't give me the real Just price, I ain't got time to bullshit with you today. <laughs> so I only had to pay the spread in between, 150 grand. Garage number two. This is a beautiful, luxurious Bentley Molson. Like Ben Mala, Bentley Molson. It's funny, this car looks black in the day and then midnight blue at night. This car, it gives you all the luxuries of Rolls Royce, but it's got that little oomph of sportiness to it. Bentley makes really sporty cars, okay? They make cars that are made to be sporty, handling-wise, uh, speed-wise. This baby here is a little monster. It's perfect for work. It's not too big, but it's big enough for me. And it fits my lifestyle and budget. I paid a buck fifty for this car. This car is like three fifty brand new. If you want to see how we negotiated this car, go to the link in the video description. So I think I've had it about maybe a year now. I'll worry about it in two years. As long as they're under warranty, they look good, they run good. I'm not worried. I got two years on this car to worry about it. That one was a half a million. We splurged on that baby. We threw a buck fifty in the air. I'm only at the six fifty. Garage number three. In here, we keep some toys. We got the Jeep that turns into a boat. We got a couple of trikes to go out riding along the beach and take rides on. Those trikes were the best money I ever spent. It probably cost me about 35 grand back then, a couple of years ago when I bought them. Number one, I'm not into all that biker. This thing here is very stable. It's got a metal frame around it. It's got three wheels for balancing. It's got automatic transmission. All you do is turn the gas and go. We had five. We got 650, 850, 950, under a million, baby, under a million. Oh, so it's per person, the million dollars. Well, it got raised. We had an increase called inflation. Entertainment, I got work, and I got play. That's practical. All right, this is her side of the house. Door number one, what do we have? We have Rolls Royce Dawn Convertible. The biggest and best convertible luxury car on the market. Look at that. That's how you get into a car. 
This car invites you in like you're walking into a mansion. You need a little bit of everything. You need a two-door convertible, you need a four-door sedan, and you need a luxury car. Ultimate luxury, if you can afford it. I got a great deal on this car, and I traded my other Rolls-Royce convertible for it. I've had this car quite a long time, and I think the warranty is still good on this thing. I might be down to one year, I gotta check with Matt. I told him to give me a list of all the expiration of warranty dates so I can see. That's how I know how to uh, manage my car portfolio, just like a real estate portfolio. I'm always looking at when does the loan end? When's the interest only up? Okay, manage your assets. So it cost me 250, cost the new guy 350. Door number two. I forgot what it is. Here we have the 2022 BMW X7 M50. Ah! Okay, this was the most practical car to get. Okay, why? I had to give away a Cadillac Escalade. It was too big for her anyway. She's only got two kids to schlep around now. She don't need no big, but ah, she wants an SUV. Well, we looked at all the SUVs. They're either too big or this one's too small. Well, finally, we found one that was just right. This car was about 100 grand or something. But, you know, I looked at the used ones that were a year or two old, and they wanted like about the same money, maybe very little less. So I said, why would I buy a used one when I could buy a brand spanking new one with no miles on it? So I, you know, when it comes to 100 grand or less cars, you can buy them new, okay, sometimes. Throw another 100 grand, but she's got her SUV and she's leaving me alone. Let's Door go. number three. <laughs> Car. She can never say I didn't treat her right. She got a Ferrari, Ferrari California. All right, this is it, baby. You want to zoom around town? You know, it makes her still feel young, you know, because she ain't uh, that young anymore. But happy wife, happy life. So, you know, it's a car she can use when she's by herself or with a girlfriend. She goes to play tennis. I would like to have one, but I'm too old and fat now. So, you know, let her enjoy it. It's not a high ticket item. It's only worth about a hundred grand. So she's got options, you know, depending on her activity. SUV, dealing with the kids. She's got the convertible. She's going to hang out, put the top down. And she's got a little sporty race car because she likes, she has a need for speed. Next month, Aaron gets his permit, providing he passes all the necessary tests, especially the drug and alcohol test. What is Aaron's first car going to be? We'll let you decide. Give us a comment and you tell us which should Aaron's car be the first? I want a Dodge Charger. I want a, I want a Scat Pack. Scat Pack. I want to be a Scat Packer. Because I feel like the Hellcat's too much to ask, so... Let's go, let's go. Everything's going to be too much to ask if we don't get that report card looking good. It's A grades, get A cars. B grades, get B cars. C grades, <laughs> you don't want to go there. <laughs> get my car. <laughs> you get a Revolve's car. Which car will your mother donate? is Chargers. <laughs> will his mother give him the Ferrari? Will he, she give him the Dawn? Or will she give him the BMW? Because if he's driving himself, then she don't need an SUV no more. I'd like to buy her a hearse to drive around. A hearse is like an SUV. It's like a station wagon. All right, here we go. The week's almost over. We ain't found a new property yet. We got to find a new property. Why? Because we sold property. We sold a hotel we owned for a very long time. The clock's ticking. How much do you have to sp find, spend? Uh, I bought some stuff, so I'm pretty much down to about, I think, seven, eight million bucks. I gotta go out and replace still. So if you got a deal for seven or eight million bucks, let me know. We identified a shopping center not far from here. You know why the ducks are here? It's probably a Chinese restaurant on the other side. They make roast duck. Nice ducks, but they shit all over the place. They're waiting, the Chinese keep them there. They feed them and keep them around. Somebody orders fucking duck. They go out in the back door. Go get the duck for the back door. They grab the fucking duck. They whack the fucking head off of it. They pull the fucking feathers and they throw it in the deep fryer and make it some duck fun. Duck chow fun. 
Those are fucking vultures, aren't they? Yeah. That means something's dead in there. Fucking vultures. Those are some mean, ugly birds. I thought seagulls were ugly. Matt, go out there and fuck with the vultures. Go lay down there like you're dead. Play dead. <laughs> and let's see if the vultures will come and start picking at you. So we came out here today, we're not far from our house, we're looking at another shopping center. Why? Because we can't find no deals in all the sector of real estate. Apartments cost too much money, hotel business is still down the toilet, so we're sticking to necessity retail. Maybe we can find some value in this one. Paulie now has taken over the retail division, and we have Ben Jr., our chief underwriter. And basically, I scope out the deals, I find something I think looks interesting, uh, ben comes out, he goes over the numbers, he underwrites them, you got a stain on your shirt, you had to and fat out. people shouldn't wear wheel, you wear white. You look too big when you wear white. Need my new you look shirt like a wrong. fucking clown. I like this shirt. Why are you going to talk about me? Because you, 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 you're skinnier than me now? You are getting skinnier. Anyway, we're going to check out who's here. We're going to see what we can do to improve the place. Look at how many empties they got. Look at the tenants that are here. He's going to look at leases. He's going to look at numbers. He's going to inspect the property. And we're going to put this whole thing together and decide, do we want to buy it? Big shots like me don't come out here for no goddamn reason just to entertain you. We're out here working, baby, making money. And if you want to make money, go to benmallow.com. Consult with Ben. Get me on the phone. I'll carve out some time and figure out how I can help you. What else? How much is this place? Yeah, how much is this? Place? I don't know. They're asking somewhere in the neighborhood. I don't want to say somebody might steal the damn deal. Forget about the price. The price don't mean shit. Whether it was five million, whether it was 20 million, I don't care. I care about the return on my investment. That's what I care about. So we're going to find out if we can get somewhere in a good cap rate because a good cap rate means a better cash on cash return. Shut up, Paulie. All right, that's the story. You can talk and that thing picks it up. Yeah, everything. You know what we should do? Now, this is a brilliant idea. This is brilliant, OK? We invent that to fit on your ear like an earring. OK. OK? And then you can wear it all the time like a fucking earring. It ain't going to fall off. It could also be designer and decorative, you know? You're going to wear an earring? You know, we got to get a rent roll out. Who's got a rent roll? I got a rent roll on my phone. Well, I figured that. Nobody prints shit out anymore. Oh, Nobody does the goddamn homework anymore. Everybody's tech go, tech go. My phone's gonna run my whole goddamn life. Come on, let's all go. Paulie has it. Let's all look on the little phone. It's not that little, it's a Max. Shit, you're a Max. I like this gray on the floor. I mean, basically, they painted the floor, but it looks like they used some type of stain instead of paint because it, uh, it absorbed in there. So they want to make sure that the slip factor, there's a slip factor on these properties that people, when it rains, that consumers and, and tenants, if they slip and fall, then we as the landlord get sued, when Dixie gets sued. So there's like a ratio of uh, coefficient slip ratio or something like that. <laughs> If you need to know, if you need to consult with, on vape, call a little bit. Ask Ben. Okay, so the whole thing, guys, is Paulie likes to vape at 13 watts or 15 watts. What, what is that? 60 watts. He ain't, he ain't vaping that. It'll do a cloud that'll fill his whole room. I try to hang out with billionaires, and you hang out with vapors, vaping airs. I'm going to buy I'm gonna buy some stuff, too. Okay, here's the story. When I go out on a boat, it gets real windy because I can't smoke in the boat, yeah. right? What's a good re, uh, torch type lighter for the wind? It's too big. It's too big. I want something small but holds a lot of juice, like a Tesla or a lighter. Yeah. Something like this. It's too big. I'm not fucking welding. That's a fucking welder. <laughs> Is this company expense? They don't open until three o'clock in the afternoon and they close around midnight. Look, these are some strange hours to sell donuts. Well, What's in the donuts is the question. Three o'clock to 11 o'clock? I, I guess they're right. Who the hell wants ice cream? But donuts are a morning thing, I thought. All right, what else we got? Oh, one of your favorite establishments? Chinese. 1,300 square feet. And when's the lease up? These places normally survive. Now that COVID's gone, this place should survive OK. Here we go. This is where. Little Ben may still be able to report for duty. Maybe. Too old, remember? 
I don't think so. You're too overweight, but you're not no, too, too old. old. We got the barber shop here. And, and you got a tan. What? You got a tan. A who? A tan. A tan? Yeah. Did you get a tan? I'm brown, I am. Yeah. She wants to spray tan me? Yeah. You need a lot of spray to do that. We'll clean you out if you tan Let's both of us. Honey, well, I charge you double. Charge me double, huh? <laughs> I think I'll pass for today, but I'll consider it. Why, even Donald Trump tans? Yeah, but mine's better. Can you do the reverse tan? My wife says she's getting too dark when she's out in the sun. Can you lighten her up? Yeah. Does she actually spray the people? Yes. Yeah. Look, she sprayed. Put your hand down. Let me see how steady it is. Pretty good. Okay. We got a tan shop. We got a barber shop. We got the psychic lady. Is on the plaza? We know, no, no, we're just looking at it. Looking at it? Yeah, it's called uh, evaluation and underwriting. <laughs> I've been here 29 years. 29, and how many more years are you gonna stay here? That's the question. It depends how low the rent goes. Oh. <laughs> how low the rent will go. I'm sorry, but rents don't go down, we only go up. Not if you're in a lease. And if we're in a market like right now, we just leave things alone. I think what we need to do as property owners to make this place more successful is we got to get more people coming here. And the Tesla thing here, if we got some Tesla charging stations here, uh -huh. that this place, right that this there. is a place that would help. Right that. there. Yeah, we got a huge parking right lot to use. So I think we would really take a lot of business away from other shopping centers and draw a lot of people here if we got the charging stations here. And a little sprucing up and fill up the vacancies and work with the tenants that we got here. With these charging stations, from my understanding, is you can, if you can put them near a wall, near a building where you have power already, it's not that expensive. But when you want to start going over here across the whole property, you got to dig up a whole goddamn line of concrete asphalt and run that expensive line all the way to that point. And that's where the money gets big. And the installation is the big cost. The unit doesn't cost nothing. It's very cheap to buy the uh, charging stations themselves. It's running the proper amount of uh, electric and cable to the location that people are going to charge at. That's the problem. Um, I mean, this is a challenging project. We got to fill the vacancies. We got to try to get it for the best price. Uh, we got tenants here that are kind of, you know, we're going to do our homework. Okay, I never did it when I went to school. He never did it, but now we're going to do it. We're gonna do our homework, we're gonna figure out the numbers, we're gonna see how what the best price is we can get in a place. We're gonna look at, if we rent the spaces up, how much profit we can anticipate, if we can accomplish that. We're gonna look at the tenants, we're gonna look at, uh, elevate, um, evaluate the risk, and if another tenant doesn't renew or leaves, you know, where are we at? It's all about money in and money out. Okay, that's what we gotta figure out. So that's the story here. We like the location, we like the condition of the property, uh, you know, it's got a good strong anchor, but a lot of these little shops here could make us or break us. So we have to decide whether or not we can handle the risk in this property. And we got to see what kind of price we get it for. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos.